Godfrey time. About the pass or something. <laughs> Jackie Gleason's with us again this morning. Thank you. Call the happy corpse. <laughs> <laughs> the big four. The big nine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought he was talking about me, girl. How are you? Hi. Well, it's nice to see you. Tony Marvin, pretty boy. Oh, my. And we have a surprise for Jackie. Gentlemen, are you ready? Please. Chinatown, my Chinatown, oh, where the lights are low. It's sweet and sour music. Hearts that know no other land, drifting to and fro. Dreamy, dreamy Chinatown, I'm an eyes of brown. Hearts seem light and life seems bright. Condon. <laughs> just wanted to show you we don't need three acres of string. I gotta go along with it. That's beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that something good? Oh yeah, boy, there's nothing like that early in the morning, both at 11 o'clock a.m. and uh, 3 a.m. <laughs> That's good music. I love Dixie. This uh, clarinet genius over here. Did you ever hear anything like that? What, what, uh, that was the read off uh, an oboe, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Norman using yeah. that. You made that one for me. A sandpan. Yeah. <laughs> They're hard to play. Even tougher to play than that is a junk. Three string junk. Three string junk. It's hard to get those sails under your arm. <laughs> Jackie, <laughs> folks have been asking me some questions. They have? The police yeah. have been asking me. <laughs> They're saying, uh, this guy can't be 43 years old. I say, what do you mean? He looks younger than that. They say, yeah, but his philosophy is much older. Well, see, what they don't understand is they live at uh, 33 and a third speed. <laughs> I come on at 78. <laughs> <laughs> 
much faster twirl. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think he's a young looking 43, ladies? Huh? You know, if I do know anything, you know why I know it? Because I'm awfully nosy. I have probably the biggest nose in the whole world. <laughs> Say that I again, got a, please, sir. The we'll biggest nose in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have to delve into things. That's a uh, problem. You know, uh, I only uh, went as far as uh, grammar school. Now, I'm not saying this uh, in a proud fashion, because I think it's stupid not to get an education. And... Uh, the way I learned what I do know, uh, if I know anything, is because of curiosity, which always isn't a very good teacher because it lacks discrimination, you know. You can get curious about a lot of things that you shouldn't be curious about. But that's uh, how I found out whatever it is that I have found out. <laughs> and that proves that I went to the eighth grade and stopped. You express yourself very well, my friend. What kind of books do you read, if you ever read, do you? I certainly do. I read about six books a week uh, when I'm working. When I'm not working, I read about ten. What and kind I, of books? Well, uh, books on philosophy, psychiatry, psychic phenomena, um, uh, world politics. Do you really? Mm -hmm. I found out that there's a great similarity between world politics and uh, television administration. <laughs> now you got to explain that one a little bit. I'd be very happy to. <laughs> Sometimes the sponsor, if the, if the uh, star is hot, for instance, you know, and his ratings are very, very good, well, he gets instructions to lay off Kamoy. You know, don't bother him. He's going good. And, uh, of course, when a performer's doing bad, then everybody comes around and, can't you do something to fix your show? <laughs> can't you get somebody in to tell you what to do? I told myself what to do when I was number one. Why should I change it now when I'm number 80? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you, if you had your life to live over again now, having reached this ripe old age, would you, <laughs> would you have gone in a different direction? You like the way you're going? I've often thought about that. Probably the only things I would like to redo are some of the incidents in my life where I have, not on purpose, but unconsciously hurt other people. Those are probably the only things I'd like to do over again. I've had a pretty good life. When you consider the fact that I start with the difference between me and Horatio Alger, for instance, with the exception of morals, was 36 cents. <laughs> <laughs> we both started from the bottom. Like one time when I signed that $11 million contract with Buick, a guy came up and, uh, who was an advisor from CBS, and he said, no, don't dare mention that they have just signed you for all that money. I said, why? He says, because the public's going to hate you. I said, well, what did I do? Did I shoot somebody to make this money? Did I kill anybody? I was just fortunate enough to have some stale jokes that they liked, and they're giving me this money. I said, I think America would be very happy to understand this, because if I can make that kind of money with my talent, they ought to be ready to become billionaires, you know. <laughs> and uh, those are the things that surprise me about television. The taboos, the things you're not supposed to let the public know about yourself. I figure there's two ways to go. A long time ago in pictures, in order to be considered a great star, you would pull up in front of the studio and roll out a red rug and jump out with two leopards on a string, you know, and have a, a coat made out of uh, some kind of mink that there's only four of. <laughs> And you would throw a few hundred dollars up in the air and walk through the shower. <laughs> what a picture. You know, and the public said, no, that's a star. <laughs> well, today, none of that. If anybody interviews you, you're going to say, no, I like to eat plain food. <laughs> I don't like to eat plain food. I'd like to have some sparrow tongues if I could get a hold of it. <laughs> I ate 
ate that I ate that plain food before I got it, you know. <laughs> I want to change all that. When I started out in show business, the reason I wanted to become a star is so that it could I could have everything in the world I thought I wanted. Suddenly, I got enough cabbage to get it, and everybody's saying, don't get it. <laughs> you know, when a guy becomes a star, in order to appease the public, he becomes an unwilling miser hoarding uh, ostentation. Why should you be like that? Beautiful line. An unwilling miser hoarding ostentation. Why should you... I had a little trouble with ostentation. <laughs> And the reason I had trouble with it is they keep saying to me, don't have it. Yeah, don't have it. <laughs> Could I have another Coke? <laughs> another Coke, La Rosa. Thank you. <laughs> Put a little oh, blood in this one. All right, I'll, I'll hold on to this. This is up here to take me to the commercial. <laughs> This, this young man has not only a very able and competent wit, he has, uh, in, inside of that waistline is a whole heck of a lot of intestinal fortitude. There should be. There's enough room, I'll tell you that. <laughs> God bless you, Jackie Gleason. You're a refreshing guy to talk to. Can we give him a rest a minute and you uh, sing a song for him? He's never heard you really yeah. sing. Sit right there. I heard, I heard them once, but I'm glad that they're going to sing because I love that stuff. So sing right me. to him. I wish I were in a what canoe. What do you want? <laughs> you, you five get in the canoe, brother. I want to see you there. <laughs> <laughs> see, you the Queen Mary you? canoe will get in. There's your seat. Be sure it's true when you say I love you and love you. It's a sin to tell a lie. Millions of hearts have been broken just because these words were spoken. I love you. Yes, I do. I love you. Schnozora. <laughs> Satchmo, Hoagie, Krupa. See them on the All-Star Jazz Show, Monday on the CBS Television Network.